writes a text there. He says, my heart feels like an alligator that you're soon going to have to leave free America. I I got another month down here before I have to return to Albania. I can't decide if Massachusetts nowadays is more like Albania under Hoxha or, uh, or East Germany under Walter Ulbricht. It could be, could go either way. Well, you'll probably have a better idea once you're back. (laughs) And then we can all wait to see what you come up with. I some some things it's best to study from afar, Grace. Yeah, I mean, you far, know, what, far far away. It's it's fun that we'll have VIPs back in studio, and we can all pretend to be in free America for a little bit, Howie. All right, so Grace Grace has got the news. What have you got for us today? All right. <laughs> So I want to talk a little bit about the media's double standard here. And I have a funny example. Uh, CNN has an article out. And I don't know if you've noticed, Howie, but it's taken uh, Joe Biden a long time to name um, a lot of his administration, especially ambassadors. He hasn't named a single ambassador. Um, And this is CNN's take. Biden takes his time filling out diplomatic corps. More than two months into his term, President Joe Biden has yet to name a single ambassador to send overseas. But he's, you know, he's taking his time, Howie. Can you imagine if it was President Trump? This is CNN. I thought you were going to talk about the CNN story about how... Uh, how Transgender bio- athletes? Yeah, biological. Have- they put that in quotation marks, biological sex. As if, as if that's some kind of weird concept. No, this is this is amazing. Debate. So that was actually just my segue to talk about CNN because this really is an amazing excerpt from one of their articles. I'm going to read this and we'll stop, Howie, as you feel um, the need to comment because it is outrageous. Though the two executive orders signed by Noam, that's Christy Noam from South Dakota, the governor, do not explicitly mention transgender athletes, they reference the supposed harms of the participation of, and they use quotes here, Males in women's athletics, an echo of the transphobic claim cited in other similar legislative initiatives that transgender women are not women. The orders also reference, quote, biological sex, end quote, a a disputed term that refers to the sex as listed on students' original birth certificates. This is my favorite part, the last part. It's not possible to know a person's gender identity at birth. And there is no consensus criteria for assigning sex at birth. Someone should let doctors know that because. How about how about just the parents if they're there, even male parents at the at the birth of their children? They can generally discern the sex of the child that is emerging from the birth canal. I did notice when I was in the, uh, the delivery room with my wife that the doctor or the, the midwife, whoever it was, said, all right, when, when the baby comes out, I'll let you say what it is. I'll let you announce it. <laughs> yeah. And I never really thought about that until now. And you don't have a medical degree. No, you have haven't it. You haven't gone to, to a well, community college and, tra- and studied transgender studies. Obviously, I said it's a boy, so I'm clearly underqualified to be a doctor. Yeah. yeah, they just didn't want the liability. It, uh, let me read from the story. I got the story in front of me as well. Uh, you listen to this, Taylor. It's not possible to know a person's gender identity at birth, and there is no consensus criteria for assigning sex at birth. This isn't a news story. There is no consensus criteria for assigning sex at birth. I, I thought there's otherwise. no way to know. <laughs> you know, when the mom always says, What is it? And the doctor says, it's a human. <laughs> uh, uh, CNN funny, is the, really losing the it. The entire time my wife was pregnant, we didn't find out what the gender was or the sex, whatever you want to use. Uh, on purpose, we wanted it to right, be a surprise. So exactly. whenever, when anybody asked us, I would I would always jokingly tell them, ah, I'm just going to let it decide when it turns 18. Because that's pretty much the way the world's going. Yeah, it's not even that wild anymore to say that. I'm sure some people are like, oh, that's (laughs) very, very woke of you. Wow, you're really surprising. (laughs) Um, There's a story out how Lester Holt got an award for something. And I want to read you this because it's really amazing. This was from uh, Brian Stelter's, you know, CNN newsletter. 
As Lester Holt delivered the keynote address Tuesday night at the 45th Murrow Symposium, in which he accepted the Murrow Lifetime Achievement Award in journalism, the NBC How News. How come anchor- I never get invited to symposiums? Or symposia. <laughs> You're not a symposium guy. I don't know why. Howie. There's a restaurant down my way called the symposium. I'll invite you there sometime. <laughs> this is like Howie when uh, Marty Walsh said, don't throw Patriots parties. <laughs> he has no interest in them until he realizes he can't go. And then he's like, wait a second. I want in. So the NBC News anchor delivered a sharp critique of ready for this, Howie. What? Both sideisms. And this is the quote. The idea that we should always give two sides equal weight and merit does not reflect the world we find ourselves in, Holt said. That the sun sets in the West is a fact. Any contrary view does not deserve our time or attention. It gets worse. Decisions do not give unsupported arguments equal time are not a dereliction of journalistic responsibility or some kind of agenda. In fact, it's just the NBC opposite. News is the definition of journalistic dereliction of duty, isn't it? Providing an open platform for misinformation for anyone to come say whatever they want. Mm-hmm. In other words, free speech, especially when issues of public health and safety are at stake, can be quite I mean, dangerous. Some things, some things, you know, they're factual. You know, like Joy Reid, her Twitter account being hacked by the time travelers who put in homophobic messages and uh, hateful speech in her Twitter account. That, that's, you can't, dis- there's no two sides to that story. She said it happened. It happened. Uh, Al Sharpton said that, uh, that, that the, uh, the, the vaccines were another Tuskegee project to, uh, to, to kill black people. You can't, Wait. you can't dispute that. But Howie, speaking of misinformation, wasn't Lester Holt the one who was at the ski resort in North Korea and was talking about how wonderful everything was. I think he was, yes. Like he was buying into the the propaganda. And he succeeded. He succeeded Brian Williams, who you know uh, saw the body floating down Canal Street in New Orleans, even though there was only an inch of water on the street. The body was floating, and then he was fired on several times in his uh, in his career. And he was held up by a, when he was selling Christmas trees in New Jersey as a kid. He was held up by a, a robber with a thirty eight. Among wow. these, are, these are just among many things. Wow, those are some good stories. Those are, yeah, and and you know, with they and some stories are so good they may be true, but you don't want to touch them. You know, kind of like the Harvey Weinstein stories that they wouldn't yeah. let uh, Ronan Farrow report on on NBC News. Remember that? NBC News is just a real bastion of you know integrity. Yeah. Speaking of integrity, Howie, the Democrats, this is an interesting story that came out of Fox News. We've been hearing a lot about the filibuster. And you know how that old cut of Obama keeps going around where he's supporting the filibuster, even though now he's saying it's racist. And then obviously, actually, Taylor, I know it's not in today's clip, so it might take a second. But could we find the Jim Eagle, Jim Crow cut? Because that that might give people a little context to what I'm about to say. He was for the filibuster before he was against the filibuster, just like he was against gay marriage before he was for gay marriage. Right. And just like, you know, you can have your, you know, if if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. This would be a little bit of a backtracking and something that we we would like to hold Obama accountable for. But the media gives him a pass. But Joe Biden at his press conference, if you even want to call it that, it was really just, you know, wonderful slobbering supporters asking this makes him. Jim Crow look like Jim Eagle. I mean, this is gigantic what they're trying to do. And it cannot be sustained. Yeah, really strange. Um, but anyway, so he he's against the filibuster. He called it a Jim Crow relic and said it has been widely abused. Um, do you know how many times the Democrats have used it compared to the Republicans in 2020? How many? Democrats use the filibuster, according to Fox News, 327 times compared to only once by the GOP in 2020. You know, I I I, pl- I, uh, I read a cut uh, or I read a story yesterday. Ben Sass called out uh, the the senator from Nebraska called out uh, Brian Schatz, the senator from Hawaii, who's been calling it racist, and he pointed out all the times that Schatz used it just last year. He he used it to stop the COVID relief bill in September and October, so Trump wouldn't get credit for the checks going out. That's what he used that filibuster for. But now he says it's a horrible thing. 
It was a wonderful thing when he was stopping uh, people from getting their uh, relief checks, though. I know, but I don't want that to destroy people's faith in the integrity of the Democrats. Um, Howie, another thing I wanted to mention here, because someone on Twitter kind of just did a quick little bullet point of some of the points of uh, Biden's infrastructure bill. Yes. And I thought these would interest you. Replace every lead pipe, universal clean drinking water, two million homes retrofitted or built. This is the one I said earlier that I think he's going to have a lot of trouble with. Universal, affordable, high-speed broadband by 2030. It's kind of a mouthful. Fix 20K miles of road slash bridges and electric vehicle charging stations I know, I lo- That's my favorite part. That's my favorite part. The I thought that might be. Why don't you just drive to your local Whole Foods? Or, the, you know, our, uh, the Whole Foods in Wellesley has, a, has an electric charging station. And, and I want to know, Grace, I've asked this question before just about Wellesley. If you have electric, free electric charging stations, why don't you have some free gas pumps for the customers too? Are they going to be free gas pumps with all these uh, these free electric charging stations? What's the difference when you get right down to it? So the Whole Foods that Howie is talking about, it's pretty close to um, where I used to go to like pick up the mail and stuff like that for the mail manager. And I used to go to that Whole Foods sometimes and grab lunch or whatever. And one time, Howie, I think I've told this on the air before. But I pulled in, I saw the EV, that's what they call them, the electric vehicle charging station. And I pulled in really fast and I was kind of in a rush. And I was like, I don't think anyone's going to, you know, really notice whether or not, and I was just driving like a, a regular car. So I said, I don't think anyone's going to notice if I pull in here for a little bit. And I went in and got my lunch and whatever. And I walked out and then, you know what I remembered as, as I was walking out to the car? A Karen was there. No, I was driving the Howie car vehicle <laughs> that was wrapped with your face on it. And I was like, oh my God, if a Karen ever saw that, it's not an electric vehicle and that monster is wrapped around it. <laughs> it was a real microaggression. All right, Grace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Howie. Due to computer issues last week, Eden Pure is continuing the thunderstorm BOGO sale. Allergy season is back. That's why you need the Eden Pure air purifier thunderstorm. BOGO is back until tonight at midnight. It ends tonight at midnight. This is your last chance. Warmer temperatures are coming. You're going to want to open those windows and doors. Pollen is going to be coming in. And when it does, you're going to need the thunderstorm air purifier. One user wrote, the thunderstorm does what it claims. It definitely is effective on my husband's allergies, sneezing, runny nose, and coughing. The thunderstorm is a small device you can hold in your hand like I'm doing right now. You can plug it into your electrical outlet or into your car by USB cable to purify the air. And the great part is it costs well under $100 when you take use the BOGO offer. I've said this before, Howie, and I'm going to say it again. If you get one, you're going to want to get another one for another part of your house. Uh, maybe the garage, maybe mm-hmm. your 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 basement. Uh, it's so. It's a useful. great gift too for it, it for sure somebody is. in your yeah. family or someone you like. If you have a couple already, you know, maybe an Easter gift. If you give Easter gifts, put it in the somebody Easter who basket. has a stinky cat, like Doctor yeah. Matt got for his exactly. son. Maybe if somebody's getting a bunny for Easter, maybe. A, oh, <laughs> oh, they <laughs> smell happens. worse than stinky cats. It happens. Put the, the Eden Pure thunderstorm near the near the hutch. The thunderstorm air purifier works like a real thunderstorm. It quietly sends out super oxygen and ions to kill odors in your room and purify the air. It's for pollen, pet, kitchen, musty basements, tobacco, or any other unwanted odors. You need the thunderstorm. Buy one and get one. Thunderstorm. The more you buy, the more you save. There's no limit, but you hurry, better hurry up. The offer ends tonight at midnight. Go to EdenPure.com and put in code word Howie Bogo. That's EdenPure.com, code word Howie Bogo. With Bogo, your problem rooms will no longer be a problem. Take advantage of this great offer. I'm Howie Carr.